There's more than one banking system out there. Let me show you what I just did. What's going on, everybody? It's been well over a year since I showed you the system that I like to use to measure out my one rail banks and kicks. Well, in today's video, I want to show you the very first system that I ever learned that also works for measuring one rail banks and kicks that I also still use today. So let's get started. So if you remember the first system that I demonstrated for measuring your one rail banks, I gave you four reference lines that you needed to know because you needed to find the closest reference line that is past the object ball in the direction that you want to bank so that way you can parallel shift that line over the object ball to show you where the object ball needed to hit on the opposite rail in order to bank it in. Well, in this system here, you're still going to be using four reference lines, but they're going to deal directly with the object ball. So let me show you what I mean by that. If I'm going to try to bank this one ball, into this side pocket. The first reference line that I'm physically gonna draw on the table is gonna be from the one ball to the opposite rail, and that's gonna look like this because I can use my cue to physically draw me a line. Now the second reference line is going to be from the tip of the cue on the opposite rail because then I'm gonna take the butt of my cue and just lay it over to the pocket that I wanna bank to lined up with the diamond as if a pocket was not here. Now I'm going to grab another cue because the third reference line is going to be from the object ball again, but we're going to draw a line to the pocket opposite from the one that we want to bank to, which looks something like this. Again, still making sure that you're lined up with the diamond as if there wasn't a pocket there. Because now what you should see here is that these two lines cross and make an X and X marks the spot. Because from where the two lines cross, you want to draw your fourth line that'll go straight to the rail that looks something like this. Because this spot right here on the rail should show you where the one ball needs to strike in order to bank it here into the side pocket. So I can pretty much just pull this line over the one ball so that way I can see a ghost ball reference and then try to hit this in with a medium pace. So I'm going to run through those series of steps again for the two ball, because while you can do everything that I did on the one ball during practice in an actual match, you can't go grab another cue to use as a measuring device, nor can you even let go of your playing cue when you have it laid across the table, because that's considered a foul. So using your playing cue and still trying to use the system would look something like this. You can still physically draw a line through the middle of the two ball to the opposite rail. Take the butt of your cue and lay it over to the pocket that you want to bank to, but you have to leave your hand on the cue because the moment you let go, that's when it's considered a foul, especially if that rule is enforced. Now from here though, you have to try to imagine the third line that goes from the middle of the two ball to the pocket opposite that you want to bank to, and then try to see where those two lines cross, which looks something around here because then I bring this over to the two ball so I can see the line that the two ball has to travel and where on the rail it has to hit, because then I can try to shoot. Now let's do the same thing again for the three ball. Let's draw a line through the three ball to the opposite rail, take the butt end of our cue and lay it onto the pocket that we want to bank it to, Imagine the third line going from the three ball to the pocket opposite from the one that we want to bank to. Try to see where the lines cross and then where they cross. Imagine a line that goes straight to the rail from there. Pull it over to the three ball so we can see where the three ball has to hit on the rail and then shoot.
Now you've heard me mention how I still use the system today, because if you've seen any of my APA matches, sometimes you'll see me measure out a bank shot using the previous system that I demonstrated before, and then sometimes you don't see me measure at all. And that's when I'm using this system because I've practiced this so much that what I'll end up doing is stand completely straight with the ball that I want to bank. And then I can imagine all four lines onto the table to where I can see that I'm going to try to get the four ball to bank right around here in order to go into the cross side pocket. Now I'll do one more demonstration with the five ball, and then I'm going to show you how you can adjust your banks with different speeds and different spins on the cue ball. So for this shot, let's go through the process manually again. Let's draw our first line through the five ball to the opposite rail, take the butt end of our cue and lay it to the pocket that we want to bank to. Try and imagine another line from the five ball to the pocket opposite that we want to bank to, and then try to see where those lines cross because at the crossing point, draw a line straight to the rail, bring your cue over to the five ball so we can see where the five ball has to hit on the opposite rail and then try to shoot. Now I'm gonna demonstrate how you can adjust your banks with different speeds and different spins on the cue ball, starting with different speeds because you've heard me say at the very end of my last bank video, how that if you hit a bank harder, then the outbound angle of the bank will shorten. And then if you hit a bank softer, then the outbound angle will widen. So what I have set up here with this seven ball should be a dead bank to the cross side pocket. So as long as I hit the seven ball with the correct speed, the seven ball should go in. Now, when I take the eight ball and try to create the same exact dead bank, but I hit this bank harder then like I said, the outbound angle is going to be cut short and I'm going to miss the side pocket on the left side. And then when I take the nine ball and try to set up the same exact shot, but I hit this bank softer, there is a chance that the nine still will go in just on the very right side of the side pocket, or it's going to miss to the right of the side pocket. Now the hard part about all of that is knowing how hard or how soft to hit a bank shot, all depending upon what scenario you might have. That's going to take practice, but let me try to set up a couple of demonstrations where we can do that. So here's a nine ball scenario where I'm going to try to bank the eight ball into the cross corner pocket and get position on the nine. Now what I've set up with the eight ball is a dead bank to the cross corner pocket, but the problem is the nine ball is partially in the way of where the eight ball needs to hit on the opposite side rail. So using the knowledge of knowing that if I hit a bank harder then the outbound angle will shorten. So therefore I can make an adjustment to make sure that I'm going to miss hitting the nine ball. And then hopefully with the correct amount of speed of hitting it harder, the outbound angle will shorten enough and still make the eight ball bank into the cross corner pocket. And I have a shot at the nine for the win. Now adjusting for softer banks is actually more difficult than adjusting for harder ones. So this is really the only way I know how to demonstrate for softer banks. What I currently have set up is a dead bank for the one ball to go into the cross side pocket. Now, if I were to draw that same dead bank line, but set the object ball to the left of that line and shoot straight at it, 
then it should be clear that I'm going to bank short. Now, I'm going to try to set up the same exact thing, except hit the shot a little bit softer. So hopefully the outbound angle will widen itself out and the bank will go. And like I said, adjusting for that is way more difficult than adjusting for a harder bank, which is usually why you see banks are hit harder. Now from this camera angle, I'm going to try to demonstrate how side spin can affect the outbound angle of a bank. So the first thing I'm going to do here is just shoot the one ball straight up table with no side spin at all, hit the second diamond and have it come back to me. Now for this hit, I'm going to put left spin on the cue ball. That's going to slightly throw the one ball to the right, as well as transfer right spin onto the one ball so that when it hits the short rail, it'll just drift further to the right as it comes down table. Now, I'm not trying to make the one ball on this shot. All I'm trying to demonstrate is how the side spin on the cue ball slightly throws the object ball, as well as transfers spin to the object ball, and that's what affects the outbound angle of the bank. And then with the same setup, I'll put right spin on the cue ball this time, which will throw the one ball slightly to the left, as well as transfer left spin onto the one ball so that the one ball will drift further to the left as it comes back down table from the bank. So now let me try to set up a couple of shots to see if I can combine side spin as well as speed to adjust any banks. So here's a setup for a game of nine ball. I have to go from the one to the two. So I'm going to try to bank the one ball here into the cross corner pocket. And using the new system that I just demonstrated, I can draw my four reference lines and pretty much see that I have to get the one ball to hit somewhere right around here on the short rail. Now, the only problem that I have is in order to get the cue ball back down table for position on the two, I'm going to have to hit this rather hard. And I now know that hitting a bank harder is going to cause the one ball to bank short. So therefore, I could put some left spin on the cue ball to slightly throw the one ball to the right, as well as transfer right spin to the one ball to hopefully lengthen it back out, make the bank, and get position on the two. Not bad, I should be able to run out from here. Now, as far as shortening the outbound angle of a bank using side spin, here's a classic eight ball trick shot that's actually pretty useful in a real game. You're on stripes, and obviously there's no way to pocket the 10 ball into this side pocket because it's blocked by the eight. Nor can you cut it to either of these corner pockets. And let's go ahead and omit banking into the cross corner pockets. Instead, we're going to bank it here into this side pocket. Now, you might be wondering, how do you do that? Well, the first thing we need to establish is in what direction do we want to bank the 10 ball, to the right or to the left? Because depending upon which direction you bank in, you also need to put the same side spin on the cue ball. So if I bank to the right, I'm going to put right spin on the cue ball. If I bank to the left, I'm going to put left spin on the cue ball. So for this shot, I'm going to go ahead and bank to the right. So if I pretty much draw any line that I want, with the exception of something like this, I can pretty much see that there's no way that the 10 ball will bank its way here to the side pocket. But the right spin that I'm going to put on the cue ball 
and I'm actually going to put a lot of right spin on the cue ball, I'm going to end up transferring left spin onto the 10 ball and slightly throw it to the left so much to where the outbound angle will shorten itself up so much that the 10 ball will actually work its way back and then bank into the cross side pocket. And as long as I avoid scratching, I've at least won the game. Eight ball, side pocket. And to wrap things up, I'm going to demonstrate how you can use the same measuring system to measure a kick shot. So what I'm trying to do here is kick the cue ball into the eight for the win. So using the cue ball now, I'm going to draw a line straight through the cue ball to the opposite rail and then take the butt of my cue and bring it over here to the eight ball. And then from the cue ball, I'm going to draw a line to the pocket opposite from where the eight ball is and see where these two lines cross and then draw a line straight to the rail, which looks something like this. And that shows me where I need to kick the cue ball. And as long as I don't scratch, I won the game. And the last thing I want to show you is how to make adjustments if you're trying to kick at a ball that's not in a pocket. So for this shot here, I'm at least trying to hit the eight ball, maybe even make it into the corner pocket. But the first thing I want to establish is how to kick the cue ball into the corner pocket using the same measurements. So I'm going to draw my line to the opposite side rail, take the butt of my cue, and bring it over to the corner pocket that I want to kick to. From the cue ball, draw my third line to the pocket opposite from the pocket that I want to kick to and see where these two lines cross, which looks right about here. And that tells me that if I kick the cue ball to that spot there, I should have an outbound angle that looks like this. Now to make the eight ball, let alone hit the eight ball, what I want to know is where do I think the center of the ghost ball is in order to make it? because then I'm gonna draw a line straight over to the projected path the cue ball will take if I hit this spot. Because between here and here, I want to see where the midpoint is, which looks right about here. Because then I'm going to parallel shift that line over to that midpoint to give me a new spot on the rail that I can kick the cue ball at. Now, I'm at least going to hit the eight ball, but I also might make it. And then notice the whole time I was measuring all that out, I still had my hand on my cue. And that's going to do it for today's video. Now, I didn't bother going through any side spin adjustments for one rail kicks using this system because I think that deserves a video all on its own. But now you have two different ways to measure out one rail banks and one rail kicks as long as you're using the correct speed because you now also know how speed and spin on the cue ball can affect the outbound angle of a bank, let alone a kick. Now, I still use both of these systems to this day, but the majority of the time, you're going to see me use the system that I demonstrated over a year ago. But whenever you don't see me measure a bank shot, that's when I'm using this system here. The only reason why I don't lay my cue down to measure out the first two lines is because I've done this so much to where I can pretty much imagine all four of the reference lines to see where I need to hit the bank. So now I can only hope that with this measuring system or the first one that I showed you over a year ago, you now have a new weapon to add to your arsenal to make you a more dangerous player. So if you found this video helpful, please give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to click the bell notification icon to be notified whenever I go live or publish a new video. Take care, everybody.